Yo, what's up guys, Complies here. So today's video, I'm gonna be going over a few different things that we can do to help improve your aim in Apex Legends. Now, obviously the most important thing to do is just to aim train and play the game as much as possible. But even with that, there's still a few things that you can do to make your life a little bit easier and sort of help fast track your way to improving. These won't make you an aim god instantly, but these are just a few things that I've done that have helped me improve just a little bit more and have made the game feel a lot better for me. So stick around for all those, you're gonna wanna see that. But before we start the video, I have to plug my social medias. So I have just about every single social media. I have Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Discord, Twitch, and the link to everything will be in the description below. Twitter is the easiest way to stay in touch with me. If you need people to play with, or you have any questions about anything, or you're just looking for a nice community to chill out in, feel free to join the Discord. But most importantly, guys, please remember to follow me on Twitch, where I stream Apex just about every other day. We have pretty good vibes on there. We like to keep things pretty chill. So if you're looking for a streamer to watch, why not stop by and watch me? And also, guys, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you like the video. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. Only about 13% of the people who watch my vids are subscribed. So if we can keep bumping that number up with each video that would be amazing and also for you guys who don't know i have joined synergy they were a huge cod team back in the day and they are now branching out into other games they're overall pretty respected they have a lot of subs they have a lot of fans so this has been a really good opportunity for me so thank you for everyone who supported me along the way and has helped me but anyways guys now we can start the video now the first thing that we're going to be talking about today is one to one hip fire and ads sensitivity now what this does is it matches our hip fire sensitivity to our ads sensitivity so it's the exact same speed it's the exact same amount of centimeters per 360. now by default the game has you set up at 1.0 and i know a lot of people still play at that now what this does is it slows down your ads tremendously and it doesn't properly scale with the fov and the reason that this is bad is because you're basically using two separate sensitivities for aiming now yes there are some players who can do that and there is a lot of people who find success with it most of the top level players don't even know about one-to-one -one sensitivity yet but if you're looking to optimize your gameplay and become the absolute best that you can be i really think you're going to want to use one-to-one -one ads sensitivity now the problem that i had with this is that when I matched it to my old sensitivity, which was 800 DPI 1.5, which is about 34 centimeters per 360, I found that it was way too fast and I couldn't control my wingman shots. I couldn't control my massive shots. However, my tracking improved tremendously. So what I did is that I took my old ADS sense when I was playing 800 DPI 1.5 and 1.1 ADS and I matched my hip fire to that, which bumped it down to about 38 centimeters per 360. And almost instantly, I noticed a huge improvement. Now, like I said before, you are going to find the most results doing this and and using an aim trainer as well but i'll leave that for another video but now i'm going to show you guys how to enable the one-to-one -one ads sensitivity for your game so the first thing that we're going to do is go into our settings and all we have to do is go down to our windows search bar type in saved games click on that then we go into respawn apex local and then settings now we're going to scroll down about two thirds of the way. And right here is where we're going to see our sensitivity settings. Now, the first thing that we need to do is find our FOV scale. If you're playing 110 and you haven't changed any files in game, it should be 1.55. If you're playing something else, I'm going to show you guys how to find that real quick. So we click back into our local folder. We go to Apex, we go to Profile, Profile.cfg. And we're going to take this value right here, CL FOV scale. See, like I said, mine is 1.55. Yours might be different. If you're playing true 110 FOV, it'll probably be 1.571. So we're going to copy that. But now I'm going to take you guys to the calculator so you can find out what we need to make our 1x sensitivity. Now I'll leave a link to this in the description below. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and fill out all this stuff. So I play on 1600 DPI, so I'm going to put in 1600. Resolution 1728 by 1080. This is where we need to plug in the FOV scale that we copied from our profile. So right here, I just come over, type in 1.55. Now my mouse sensitivity is 0.68. Now, once we plug that in, you guys don't need to worry about any of the optic zoom sensitivities. All we need to do is come over to the 1x scope, pistol, SMG, and shotgun tab. And we're going to copy this value right here in the magnification. So for me to have a 1 to 1 ADS sensitivity, it's going to be this value right here, 1.318. So I'm going to copy that. Then we're going to go back into our settings. We're going to find where it says mouse zoom sensitivity scalar zero. We're going to want to copy that value into that right there. Then we hit save, X out of that. You can X out of this one as well. Then we go back into our settings settings file, we right click it, hit properties, click read only, apply, and then okay. This will make sure that our sensitivity stays locked to that and the values don't get changed. However, if you do want to change something, you're going to need to come back into here, uncheck read only. Your sensitivity should be one to one now and your ADS is going to feel kind of fast. So if it does feel a little bit too fast for you, I'm going to show you the method that I did. I'm just showing both methods because I know some people are going to want the other one. Some people are going to want the first one. If it's too fast, stick with me real quick and I'm going to show you guys how we can change that. All right, guys. So now we're going to go back to the calculator and next we're going to plug in all of our regular settings up to the 1x optic so everything that i used to use i'm gonna go ahead and plug that in so i used to use 800 dpi resolution was still the same field of view multiplier was the same however my sensitivity was a little bit different 
So you can see that on 1600 DPI and 0.68 sensitivity, it's about 38.2 centimeters per 360. Now I'm gonna show you guys how I got that value. Now I'm gonna plug in my old settings again, 800 DPI, 1.5 cents, and I was playing 1.17 ADS. Now, if you've played this game for a long time, chances are that you're used to your ADS sensitivity. So a good thing to do would probably be to take your ADS value and make that your new hipfire, which is exactly what I did. I didn't transfer it exactly because I felt like it was a tad bit too slow. I just bumped it up a tiny bit. All that we have to do is find this sensitivity and match it up to that 39. Now in the 1x optic tab, we're gonna put in our one-to-one -one sensitivity, whatever it may be. Like I said before, mine was 1.318. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in real quick. And then we're just going to keep bumping down our sense until we can get it to match that 39 or whatever you guys have, whatever you guys had in your old ADS value. So for my new sensitivity to match my old ADS one, my sense would now be 1.33. And to change that in game, all we have to do is go back to our settings file. And then right here, it says mouse sensitivity. I would plug in 1.33, then hit save, then make sure to set it to read only. However, I'm not going to do that just because I already have my sensitivity found. That's just for you guys. And now your ADS value is going to feel exactly the same as it did before, but your hip fire is going to be a tad bit slower. So now we'll come into game and test it out. And you should notice that your ADS sensitivity should feel very familiar. However, your hip fire sensitivity is going to feel a little bit off, going to be a little bit slower, but it doesn't take too long to get used to because you're going to be ADSing most of the time anyways. And that's probably why I'd recommend this second method as there's just a little bit more muscle memory and most people are going to be a lot more comfortable with this one. But that's it for the one-to-one -one ADS sensitivity. Now we're going to be moving on to the next thing, which is going to be playing on a higher DPI value. Now I've been playing on 800 DPI for about four years now. I just recently bumped it up. And I know there's going to be a lot of people saying, oh, well, you bumped up your DPI. Aren't you playing a higher sense now? No, because obviously you're going to compensate for your sensitivity after you bump your DPI up. So you're playing the exact same sensitivity. The number just looks a little bit different. The only thing that matters is your CM per 360 value. Now, first, we're going to look at this graph right here. Now, ignore these last three points, although they do have their place. Most people aren't playing on a pulling rate of 8,000 yet. So all we need to do is look at these three values right here. Now, as you can see, switching from 400 DPI to 1600 DPI gave him a two millisecond decrease in response times. Now, I know what you guys are saying, like, oh, it's just two milliseconds. You're never going to be able to feel the difference, blah, blah, blah. Well, if there's an advantage, no matter how small it is, why would you not be leveraging that? I guess that might just be the competitive person in me, but I feel like if there is an advantage, no matter how small, you should be using that. Now, also, I want you guys to check out this video right here by Banana Gaming. He goes over 400 dpi versus 1600 dpi and he covers a little bit about pixel skipping and this also confirms that 1600 dpi just overall does feel smoother than 400 dpi so watch that video for yourself guys i'm not going to go through it right here but now i'm going to show you guys how to keep your same sensitivity while switching to 600 dpi so guys i will leave a link to this website in the description below it's pretty easy to use. All you have to do is come down and select our main game, Apex Legends, Apex Legends, and then our DPI. I used to play 800. Sensitivity was 1.36. Then all we do here is we enter in our new DPI, which is 1600. And this is going to be our new sensitivity value. And all you have to do here is copy that. We go back into our save games folder, respawn, Apex, local, settings, like four, scroll about two thirds of the way down. And then right here where it says mouse sensitivity, that's where we copy in that value that we just got. So like I said, mine's 0.68, I already have that. You hit save and then make sure you apply it to read only. And that is gonna be it for the DPI part. Now we're gonna go into the next thing. All right guys, so the next thing that we're gonna be talking about is stretch resolution. Now stretch resolution can help you in a few ways. For one, it makes the hitboxes slightly larger. Two, it's less pixels that your game has to render. So that could result in a small FPS boost and more consistent frames. And third, your movement feels a little bit different on stretch res. It feels a little bit slower, but not in a bad way. It almost feels more fluid. Now I think that's a little bit more personal preference for me, that last one, but that's just how I feel. I know some people are gonna feel the same way, some people might not. But if you guys do want to improve your aim and play as optimally as you can i would recommend playing stretch resolution so enough talk of that real quick i'm going to show you guys a quick demonstration of the hitboxes and then also show you guys how to enable stretch res so if we look at this picture right here i think that it explains it very well now obviously the two games aren't exactly the same but they do run on the same engine and the way that the hitbox stretch is very similar so as you can see going from 1920 to 1080 down to 1728 by 1080 there is about a 15 percent increase in the hitbox size and going from 1920 by 1080 down to 1440 by 1080, it's about a 33% increase in hitbox size. Now this can be very good, but also remember that it does come with the trade-off that enemies do move slightly faster due to there being a smaller FOV. So it is kind of a trade-off. However, I do think that trade-off is worth it. So take it as you want. And now I'm gonna show you guys how to do that real quick. So fellow NVIDIA users, all we have to do is right-click, go into our NVIDIA control panel, go down to change resolution, 
customize, check enable resolutions not exposed by display, create custom resolution. So I play in 1728 by 1080. So all I have to do here is enter in 1728. Everything else should already be checked out for you. You want to save this resolution? Yes. So your screen should flash a couple times. It should be ready. But as long as this is checked up here and you see this, you should be good to go. So all you have to do is hit OK. Now we're going to put our custom resolution in Apex. So all you have to do is go down to our Windows search bar, type in save games, respawn, Apex, local, video config.txt. A little bit over halfway down, you'll see default res and default height. This is where we're going to import the res. So we did 1728 by 1080. This will probably say 1920. All we have to do is change that to 1728 and then make sure the one right below it says 1080 and then we're good to go on there. All you do is hit file, save, X out of that. Then you want to right click it and make sure that's set to read only. Now, if you guys do want to change your res again, you're going to have to come in here and uncheck read only. Now I'm going to be showing you guys how to change the letterbox so that text aligns properly on the screen. So first, we just need to go into our Steam, right click Apex Legends, go to properties, local files, and browse. And this will take us to where Apex Legends is installed. So we need to go to our config file right here, CFG. Now, if you guys don't have an auto exec file, copy this config default and then you want to paste it in here as well. And the two commands that we're going to be importing are going to be mat letterbox aspect goal and mat letterbox aspect threshold. These will be in the description below as well. So you just copy those, put that in there, hit X and save. You don't have to set these to read only. Now that's what you do if you already have your auto exec, you just copy it in, you're done. However, if you don't have one and you've already copied and pasted the config default, all you have to do is come down here, rename this to auto exec. Now I already have one. I'm just going to put auto exec one just for demonstration purposes. You guys don't need to put the one just doing this so it doesn't make another duplicate. Then you come in here, you hit control A, select everything, delete that, and then paste in the two commands that I have. Then you hit save and then you should be good to go. So now that we've got all of our files set and ready to go, we're going to go back into Steam. We're going to right click on Apex Legends, go to properties, and in your general tab in the launch options, you need to paste this in right here, plus exec auto exec. And that will ensure that both of the commands that we put in our auto exec file run when we launched the game so all you have to do is paste that in x out of this and then you're done so now that we've booted back in apex legends you should be in stretch resolution check our resolution let's go into our settings real quick video Yep, right here. It should be aspect ratio 60 by 10, resolution 1728 by 1080. I should also mention you want to set all of your settings to the very lowest. You can have texture streaming budget up just a little bit. However, everything else you want it completely off or low. This will ensure that you have the least amount of input lag, but that's going to do it for today's video. I hope this stuff helped you. Now, like I said, these are just tools that you can help use to improve. It's not a cheat code. It's not going to make you an aim god instantly. You're not going to become a Kovac warlord overnight. These are just a few things that will help speed up that process. Just to try and help you guys become the best players that you can be you know that's what i'm here for just to help you guys but if you guys did like the video if this stuff does help you remember to like comment and subscribe don't forget the notification bell check out the social media links in the description below and follow my twitch to watch and play some apex live just about every other day but that's gonna be it for me guys hope you guys enjoyed hope you have a great rest of your day peace